its energy surrounds us and binds us. What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome back to Carbonite Convos. We're here live with uh, one of the main hosts of the Nerd Academy podcast, Jared Bowman. How you doing today, man? I'm good, man. How are you guys? We are doing pretty awesome. A lot of Star Wars news, a lot of, you know, a lot of crazy stuff going on right now, but we are excited, uh, you know, just to talk about some Marvel MCU Spider-Verse and, uh, you know, just, just keep it cool. What about you, Alec? Same thing, man. Uh, you know, obviously, <clears throat> pretty cool stuff, so I'm ready to get this thing going. Sounds good. So, um, Jared, do you want to get us up to date on any, any new projects you guys got? Uh, you know, in the works or anything over at over at Nerd Academy or uh, Knights of the Nerd Republic? Uh, yeah, uh, we finally have our uh, T Public set up. If you go to our website, www.thenerdacademypodcast.com, click on Student Store, it'll take you to our T Public. Uh, we have some amazing art uh, made by Dave Brady at Mindful Jedi on Twitter. Uh, he did this really cool mural. Uh, for both Knights of the Nerd Republic and for Nerd Academy. Uh, the Knights one is us as like Star Wars OCs. Uh, the Nerd Academy one is us as our favorite comic book characters. Um, I got Superior Spider-Man because obviously I got to go with Otto. Uh, That's awesome. But yeah, we, uh, speaking of Superior Spider-Man, have a, our new Patreon uh, uh, one oh son of a bit heroic history 101 uh yeah. where travis grossman and i uh do retrospective deep dives on some of our favorite comic book stories uh first episode is going to be dance lot superior spider-man uh and we got our star wars versus series on our patreon once a month uh this month's episode was qui-gon Jin versus plo Koon, yeah. and then uh the matchup for october is Darth Vader versus General Grievous. Uh, That's that'd be cool. sweet. Because we never yeah. really, yeah, you know, we never saw Anakin or or even Vader for that matter, you know. But we never saw Anakin fight Grievous re- like at all. Now that I think about it, it's, that's really interesting. Hmm. Yeah, that's so, that's so, that'll make for a good topic. I bore sure. Butchers against each other. Oh yeah, yeah. there we go. We'll definitely be checking that out. Yes, sir. Um, so, Alec, do you want to? want to get into this this swing of things good good one nice um no yeah but yeah, but yeah for sure for sure well, so you know uh you know we had the idea to, to to switch up uh you know get away from the star wars aspect just a little bit just to mix things up a little bit you know get something fresh in um and i just happened to watch you know into the spider verse the other day because you know i'll say this a million times it's my favorite movie ever absolutely fantastic 10 out of 10 i wouldn't change a thing about it i thought it was literally perfection um and you know i wanted to do a spider-man theme obviously peep the wall uh and i'm like you know so many things have been done uh i might as well do something around spider-verse so um i'm like what's interesting about it and green goblin came to mind and you know to the to the general fan you know you see the original the, the spider-man trilogy and you see green goblin and you see that sort of thing and you know if you aren't super familiar with it you see green goblin and spider-verse you're like what is this you know right and alec like you know you went you went all, all off on your own on this one you did it start to finish so i didn't know any of this information until alec brought it out and you know we saw into the spider-verse together in theaters um I know we've watched it a good couple times since then, um, but that was always a main question of mine because you know I'm 24. I grew up with uh, the Raimi Spider-Man. Um, that's the Green Goblin I knew. I never really read the comics or anything like that, um, so I was always really curious why he was so deformed and everything. Um, so I think I think I think that was a really cool video. Right. To be honest, it's my it's my favorite Green Goblin uh, just because I'm a, I'm a huge I'm a huge Miles fan. Uh, yeah. I don't know about you. I don't know about you, Jared. Dude, you, are you into it or? Oh, I I prefer if I had to pick. I definitely prefer like the big green goblin with like the the the, the normal look. I do like the ultimate right. version. And I, think, I think it works really well in the context of the ultimate universe. 
um, especially in the backdrop of Into the Spider Verse. Um, I do prefer the normal look, uh, just just because I like the glider and all of that. You know, right. it's silly. sweet. It's really sweet. It's it's it, it's really iconic. So like that's why I'm a little bit more biased towards that version. Uh, but I, I I definitely respect the ultimate version of uh, Gobby being the favorite. I respect it. Hundred percent. I I just like the whole vibe. Like I you know look at some of his like most famous villains, Rhino, Vulture. All these dudes are like hybrid like, lizard. All all these people are like hybrid beings that had some sort of weird mutation. And I just think that the Ultimate Goblin just like really fits in with that. And I think he's way more intimidating. Just my personal opinion. It makes Peter's death in the Ultimate Universe a lot more of an interesting fight, and like. Peter giving his life to beat Norman has a whole lot more weight when you see him fighting this literal monster. Monster. Yeah. Like it's it's just a beast. So seeing Peter give his life to defeat that has a lot of weight to it. And I don't think it I don't think Peter died would work if it would fit. Sorry, what was that last part? I mi- I just missed that last little part right there. Sorry, I don't know why Zoom always eats me alive. <laughs> no, you're good, um, man. Uh, no, I just I don't think the fight and Peter's death in particular would have worked as well as it did had it been like again the normal get up. I do like the mm-hmm. more armory version that we get with the Willem Dafoe Sam Raimi version. Uh, you know, not quite the Dane DeHaan meth right. mouth <laughs> goblin uh, in Amazing Spider Man too. Uh, but yeah, no, I respect it. And the video was great. It was really I, good. I, I appreciate that, man. And, um, you know, again, I wanted to kind of give some, a little bit of information, not that it's not public knowledge, but you know, about where the intentions came from. And it's, and it's obviously, it's not, it's not identical to the ultimate universe. Um, no, which is, which is why I was a really big fan because it wasn't just like carbon copied. It was literally, it was a new look, a fresh look, um, I, I thought it was sick, obviously with the art style and everything too, um, with the tongue and all that stuff. I thought it was oh yeah, sweet. Um, yeah, I'm in the same boat. Like Doc Ock is my favorite Spider-Man villain, and the version we get in Spider Verse, I absolutely love. Like I love that little reveal where it's like, you know, oh, oh I bet your friends call you. My Doc friends Ock. call me no, Liv. My friends call me Liv. My enemies call me Doc Ock. Why <laughs> they didn't make a Funko Pop of Doc Ock? I don't Kingdom. know. Or Kingpin, either one of them. I don't know. I would really? buy that in an instant, but I thought they well, did no, no, make no. a Kingpin. No, he means um. Oh, uh, the, the Spider Verse ones. He means ones. from yes, a Spider Verse line. Because really? They did. They did Kingpin from uh, the anniversary. No, no, no. And well, that, but what was Daredevil? They did one for Daredevil, and then like an no 80th way. anniversary one. No. But they didn't for the end of the Spider Verse movie. They didn't make the female Doc Ock or anything like that. Or uh, like Kingpin, which Kingpin's the main, the main villain of the movie. I, I really surprised. thought they did do a Spider Verse Fisk. That surprises me. I know. I didn't. Oh, if it's out there, he'd have it. Oh, I, I'd, I'd be on it. No, but um, <laughs> oh, I believe it. <laughs> the the one thing I am really interested with in, in with this Green Goblin, obviously in the ult, in the Ultimate Universe, he he returns, um, mm-hmm. and with into the Spider Verse being this multi dimension thing, I would love for his return just because he, he's he, he's in it for all of like seven minutes in spider-verse and he's sick and I, I think that'd be awesome and i would love to see in some way shape or form just some sort of new loophole and he pops back in there yeah i i'm very curious as to what they do with this villain wise because you know they, they have that post credit scene with uh 2099 with miguel mm-hmm. o'hara and I, part of me is expecting them to, for the sequel, directly adapt the Spider Verse storyline, with like the weird pan dimensional vampires that exclusively feast on spider people, uh, because comics are weird like that. They are weird. Uh, <laughs> I love it, but oh, my God, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. Yeah, uh, but. It's so strange. Or you, you could kind of, you know, adapt something like that, and now it's just the multiverse of all the different villains. We're like, here's a bunch of different versions of Green Goblin and a bunch of different versions of Venom and 
so on and so forth that are going toe to toe with all of the iterations of Spider Man. I actually, let me ask. That's a good point. I, 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 I'd be a fan either way. But I, again, I, I'm a big fan of just like different suits and different looks and those sort of things. I'd love that. A different Prowler, a different Goblin, a different Doc Ock, whatever. Maybe, maybe even some more inf- infamous, you know, sh- I don't know, the, the Shocker or uh, yeah. Mysterio or something along those lines. Let It'd me be interesting guys, for sure. Sorry, Go ahead, Nick. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. I just had a quick question because, you know, you guys, uh, Alec, I knew you were the a Spider-Man buff more than I am. And uh, Jared, I, I could tell you, you know a lot. So <laughs> um, I, I'm a big MCU fan. That's where my main Marvel fandom comes from. I like some other stuff too, but that's my main, like, I love the MCU. Um, but given your guys' knowledge on, you know, the Spider-Verse, the comics, all that stuff, what do you think, like, is a decent path that can be taken with Spider-Man in the MCU or in Sony or like a combination of the two, like what kind of villains? Like, I, I don't know. Like what's your guys' opinions on that? Uh, That'd be a question. I'm sure. Yeah. A lot of that is dependent on what uh, Disney and Sony can do moving forward with their own Let, working relationship. Let's say in a perfect world, like Sony and Disney they, can, they can make this. What, what were you saying? That they extend the deal. Yeah, let's say, you know, it works out how everybody wants it to. I think if that is the case, I think the best path for them to take is to do some type of plot line involving Kraven in Spider-Man 3. Uh, I think the whole premise of Peter being on the run now and being a fugitive, I think pitting him against Kraven the Hunter being some type of uh, mercenary uh, who has Peter's name on his list. I've seen a lot of people uh, float the idea out that to make it even more uh, deeply rooted in the MCU, you have Craven be Wakandan uh, of origin uh, and a lot of his tech be that vibranium based stuff. And I so think you're, so you're shutting that- down uh, Keanu as Craven. Yes, I am. <laughs> and I, I, I'd rather see Ke- Moon Knight. Uh, I think moving forward with his character, you definitely, because we see the MCU is done with necessarily doing like the three movies and you're done rule. Like we're getting Thor love and thunder. Uh, So if they're done with the trilogy rule, this is your chance to actually build a sinister six. I think Spider-Man's different with that rule. Cause you know, like he's young, he's very like, the well, actor is now so it's young. whole thing. Like, the that, whole yeah. Sony, like, like it's going to... Spider-Man has always been, you know, people know Captain America. They know Hulk, Iron Man. They know all of them. But it'd be pretty hard for someone in the world not to hear of Spider-Man. He's like its own branch. It's almost like I picture it like Batman or something. I think yeah. Spider-Man's his own branch in Marvel. Like, they could... But I, I don't see a three movie deal being the end because yeah. the from end, a business gonna perspective, with, it, it, they're going to go make with sense. what makes them money. I mean, the, literally, if you if you continue to do this thing, sit and sort of this whole sinister spinoff, like who wouldn't go see that? I I'd, I'd be there opening night. I, I, bam, done. And yeah, now, and that that's the other the way they've handled spider-man in the mcu is that like you know we had a movie with vulture vulture still alive mac gargan is still kicking around and hasn't become the scorpion yet he can be the other villain in spider-man 3 same thing jameson shells out the money to turn mac gargan into this creature boom you got scorpion so you got vulture scorpion there's still a shocker who's alive right there's debate as to whether mysterio is actually dead there's Morbius mm. that's going to be happening. Yeah. It's not in the MCU, but kind of. Yeah, uh, it's like MCU adjacent. Right. You know, at that point, you already have four of the six introduced, which Cash gives you time to introduce. in there. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Or at that point, that's where you introduce the MCU versions of Norman Osborn and Otto Octavius. Well, they say they are, they are uh, canon in, in that because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Norman Osborn technically – bought Avengers Tower or Oscorp did. 
think that might have been in the video game. I'm mm. not. I'm not 100 percent sure. Though. I was re. I mean, I mean, I, maybe I misread it or something. But that, that's who he sold. That's who Tony sold uh, Avengers Tower to. Is Oscorp. I know a lot of people have speculated it. I don't know maybe, if it's maybe like 100% I'm maybe I'm wrong yet. But that's a, maybe, I want I mean, that to be the case. I, yeah, <laughs> I hope I'd be, that's I'd what be happens. Right with that. The two theories I've seen with like what happened to Avengers Tower is that either it was sold off and absorbed into Oscorp, or it's going to be the Baxter building. Either yeah, one would be sweet. That. Yeah, either way. I'm either getting Oscorp or the Fantastic Four. I'll take whichever one you want to give me. And maybe do it right this time. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know why when you said that. I thought you meant like do the Avengers Tower right. It, like, no, it just no, didn't no, click. No, no, and I was no. like, I was sitting there thinking like, wait, what is this dude what saying you right now? Like, I was nah, like, yeah, Fantastic Four, dope. right? And then maybe uh, old Spidey can get tied in with that. I mean, we'll see. Yeah. And then, again, they have to make this deal work. Because as of now, we're only going to get one more solo Spider-Man movie and then him appearing in an Avengers movie. I don't Other than that, that's all we have yeah, left for so, Peter in the MCU. I don't so hopefully this deal gets extended. <laughs> I think they'll fit. There's, there's too much money to be made to, to not. On like, both ends. Exactly. Both ends. Yeah. I just, oh, my gosh. But the thing is, you got to see Sony's side, too, because I'm sure that they, if, if they make Spider-Man movies, like people will still go see it. And they have like, this whole Sony versus Venom verse potential know, going on too. Like, so I mean, there's a whole lot of things in the up in air. As long as there's something, whether it's MCU, Sony, whatever, some sort of production that keeps the Spider Verse type momentum going, as a fan, I'm fine with that. Just something. Yeah. Give us something. Absolutely. We'll see. I don't mean to open up a can of worms, but what about Spider Verse coming into the MCU? Well, in into the into the Sony verse and all that. I mean that's fair. I mean, I it's probably more likely that the Sony verse would go into that. Like, in yeah, opinion. really. Yeah. Huh. Um, Wait, like, so they we, make it more animated? Yeah, like they like uh, there have been talks of like uh, of uh, Tom Holland being in Sp- in Spider Verse two and and, to, and really those sort of. I things. would love that. I oh, I'd love it too. I don't know if that's actually going to happen or not. I mm-hmm. doubt it. Tom Holland nearly appeared in Venom. Yeah. They cut yeah. his scene out at the very end, like the, right before it came out. Tom Holland had a cameo in Venom. Mm, that I did not know that. That would have been awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah, that would yeah. have made that hard to watch movie a little easier to watch. Oh goodness! <laughs> but you know, that, that's my biggest question. Is that I think Sony has a very interesting strategy going on right now, where couldn't quite tell what the nature of Venom's connection to the MCU was because they never like address anything MCU wise. So it's safe to go, oh, these aren't connected. Yeah. But now you have the trailer from Morbius. Exactly. That has murderer written on Spider Man and Adrian Toomes shows up and it's Michael Keaton. <sighs> and it's like, what is this supposed to be now? Well, well let's talk about that that mural for just a sec. Like it's so many things. I, like it didn't make sense because it, it it's literally it's it's supposed supposedly it's Tom Holland, but it's the Raimi suit, but it's from like the, the picture is from the, the game. game. <laughs> so it's like I think they probably did it on purpose just to make it so open ended. Yeah, like, what is Sony's going to Sony? Sony's going to Sony. Jeez, should be a T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, that's awesome. All right. So, you know, while we're kind of in that limbo mode between Sony verse and MCU, um, you want to get into a little bit about the Tesseract? Yeah, man. All right, let's hear it. So, um, you know, if any, you know, anybody who watched the video, you know, you know, it's just a, a full timeline of the Tesseract and the Space Stone within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um so, you know, I'm not going to run through all that. Uh, it, you know, I, I really liked making this video. I don't know why it was so fun, but it, I incorporated a lot more video. And I feel like that just like, sh- it was, if you watch it on YouTube, you can just see the Tesseract in action. It was, it was so cool to make, but I guess my co- sorry, what were you? No, I just, I just want to throw out there, like as, as just, as an MCU fan myself, obviously, obviously like what the Tesseract like means as as a fan like obviously when iron man or when it whenever we saw iron man in theaters years ago 
and, and building all this stuff up. We saw it in Captain America uh, for the first time. I don't know why I even mentioned Iron Man, but uh, we saw it in Captain America in 2011, 20, 20, was it 2011, right? What? Yeah. Is that when it came yeah. out? Yeah. I mean, we had no idea when what came out. When Cap came out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I and mean, we had no idea what, what, what that was going to entail, right? We didn't know yeah. the sequels. I mean, Nick, we, you know, we were what, 13, 14? All right. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it, it turned into such a symbolic piece that, oh, all of a sudden you see the Tesseract in the background, like, whoa, 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 what's going on? And that's when little pieces started connecting here and there. And I think that's one of those things that, you know, you know, as fans, we really look for. And I think that's just, in my opinion, the truest representation of what the MC represents. Definitely. And that's why it kind of started off the way it is. It's like, you know, they gave us a lot. They gave us a lot of characters, a lot of stories, places, plant, like everything. But at the core of the MCU so far, it's been these six infinity stones. And I just wanted to focus on the Tesseract. And long story short, I was watching, um, I was watching, Captain Marvel with my girlfriend. We're doing a Marvel marathon because she's never seen them in order. So we're doing this and I'm watching Captain Marvel. And the whole time I'm sitting there trying to think of an idea to write a short story on. And then when the Tesseract starts coming up, that's where I was like, okay, like, where was it before this? Like, how did it get there? Where did it go directly from here? And I was like, well, shoot, there's, there's gotta be information about this. If I can just put it in a quick video, like that'll, I feel like it'll go a long way. And I, I watched a couple other videos that did a timeline too, but I couldn't find one that went through Endgame. So I was excited about that. And um, I guess I, my question to you guys is before this, what was your biggest like, like question about where the Tesseract was at what time, you know, it, or in what movie, if, if you don't mind me asking. Upon watching the video, it occurred to me just how much, screen time the tesseract gets in the mcu yeah especially if you do a chronological rewatch yeah and start mm-hmm. with first avenger and work your way that that like that like the first third of the mcu is dedicated to the tesseract like yeah. with the exception of iron man one and two it's either the main MacGuffin or an important plot element to every phase one movie, especially throwing in to Marvel. Yeah. So I just, it didn't occur to me that I was like, most of these movies are just about the space stone. Yeah, exactly. For a good while. Like these are just all about the space stone. That's why, you know, I'm, I'm going into this new series about doing all six infinity stones. And that one was around seven minutes. And then I was thinking, I was like, there's no way the rest of these stories are going to be anywhere near that long. Cause we don't even hear of the Soul Stone until, uh, um, I think, Infinity War. And it was only in, like, It just all happened so quick. Exactly. You yeah. know, we, I can do... There's good stuff about the Aether, uh, the Aether, whatever it ether. is. E, the Aether, the, the Mind Stone, the, all that, the Power Stone. But, like, I'll be able to fly through those. I'm excited to make yeah. those. The Mind Stone just basically becomes a historiography about vision. Yep. Yep. You know, like it just becomes. It's 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 interesting just how each of the stones were were introduced because I remember, you know, watching Age of Ultron back a lot because I love Ultron. Well, I love the movie. I don't love Ultron, but I remember there's just so many little hints about about these infinity stones. And I remember realizing these things after infinity war, because when you watch them through, you're like, Oh, okay, cool. Like that's some cool visual effects. But then you see things in the background. Like you, I remember this one scene, you see Thanos's glove in the stones in space and stuff like that. And after you watch infinity war, and then you go back and look, you notice like how great they were at including all these things up to the very end. And it's weird how, you know, it started with the Tesseract pretty much. It was, it was fun to make though, for sure. Alec, um, what did, I feel like you, you brought up something about the Tesseract that I wanted to, I wanted to bring up the other day, but I can't remember what it was. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, one thing I noticed making it, it seems like the Tesseract just goes back and forth between earth and Asgard. Am I right? 
Yeah. I I think aside from Thanos, yeah. The only person who's like actively cognizant of the Infinity Stones is Odin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think the collector would be too, just because he seems to know yeah. a good deal about those. And then like um I'd say like the sorcerers from Doctor Strange, but other than that, like they no one's on a real quest to acquire all them. And well, even the ones that don't yeah. understand it. The ones yeah. that understand it don't want anything to do with that. Except maybe the yeah. collector, he's kind of an idiot. But But the thing is is he just collects it like I I, I don't know. Like, I don't think he'd really do anything with them. Right, like the sorcerers, they want nothing to do with anything else. They just want to yeah. protect the time stone and go about their business. Because <laughs> they know that stuff's going to mess things up real quick. So, I, I always found it interesting because we see in the first Avenger that, you know, people, ordinary people can't even look at it. And then I feel like throughout the MCU, it, it just gets so common that it's like, I feel like you could play catch with the Tesseract at a point and it would, it wouldn't make a difference. Like, but in Captain America, when you first see it, you see him open the, the thing that he pulls out of the tree mural, he looks at it and it just glows everything around him. And, you know, it, it just seems a lot more powerful at the beginning. And I, I don't know why. You you have that in a lot of like long running stories like the mm-hmm. MCU, where like they they kind of forget that it's supposed to be a big deal when something like that happens. Yeah, like th- this is this is such a absurdly specific reference. I remember rewatching the TV show Charmed. Okay, <laughs> if that means anything to anybody, <laughs> there is this one character who has this like very particular method of teleporting first time you ever see him do it it's like a whole moment and then like the next episode it's just happening constantly and it's just nobody cares anymore like they're barely even like they're cutting away from him because they don't even care to show it happening anymore so like it's just like yeah okay you're you, you, you saw it okay cool it's cool we agree that it's cool all right moving on yeah it comes real commonplace almost yeah yeah so um you know just just getting opinions which which stone would you guys be most interested in seeing next i'm most intrigued by the soul stone yeah see that probably has the most hist well that or the ether probably have the most history besides i was interested in the the time zone to be the the time zone the time stone to be honest i feel like it that would have a pretty cool story. I yeah, don't know a lot they, about it, but yeah, that's the fun of doing that kind of thing. That's yeah. some of the most fun I have doing the Star Wars versus series. Yeah, is that like it's all characters I'm familiar with, mm-hmm. but like you know, it, you, you learn a lot about those characters when you like get into the nitty gritty of how they operate. Yeah, in those situations, so you know, I the opportunity to. Uh, make the learning about something into a project is always one of the best things to do. I'd love yeah. to know more about what the Aya Agamotto, like the, the, obviously the capsule that holds yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and obviously like the relationship, like the ancient one. And then the, obviously the sorcerer princess Reams that were before that. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously she was around for a long time. Um, so like, I, I, and there's no real MCU information on it out there, but I think that'd be something, something pretty cool to hear about. Sounds good. Maybe that one will be just more history of it, like, in general. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know, but we'll see. I, I also think it'd be cool to do highlight something about, like, Odin's uh, Odin's vault, just all the stuff he had in there. Cause that, that would be a really good video topic. Yeah. That would be it. Yeah. There's, there's, you know, in doing this research, going back and forth from, like, how it was on Earth and Asgard, like, it spent most of the time in Odin's vault, and then – Obviously, when I'm seeing all this, I see just articles and everything about the other stuff in there. And he had some, he had some really cool stuff. So that'd be, that'd be cool to do a video about for sure. No doubt. I'm sure Alex ready to get his first Spidey video out of the way. Not out of the way. Just get it. <laughs> just get it. Uh, That's the thing, man. It it's up. so there's it's so broad. broad. It's fi- It's hard to find something just to focus on like with Spider-Man related stuff. Obviously, yeah. like the. The, the stories out there there's so many and it, it obviously been around forever it's hard to really focus in on one particular thing so like this is one of those things i'd love some feedback on interest or 
ideas or, or something along those lines that, you know, ge people are genuinely interested about. I love to talk about um, just because obviously there's, there's so many good things out there that it's hard to really just pick one. I would say if you're trying to do Spider-Man stuff and you said before that you like Scarlet Spider. Big Scarlet Spider. Listen, I have never seen anybody do a recap of the clone saga oh. where they didn't sound like they wanted to like jump in. <laughs> Dude, it is so <laughs> complicated. <laughs> like <laughs> it is ridiculous. Like it's just like, what is even happening? But, yeah. So if you're yeah. feeling bold, you can do the clone saga. If you want to talk about hey, Ben man. Riley, let's go bold, go bigger, go home, see what happens. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. But yeah, I'm it's lost. a great idea. I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm down. No, it's all good, man. It, it is a, ooh, it is a yeah. interesting. Uh, interesting. I, I love Ben Riley. I love the Scarlet Spider too. It's actually my favorite one. I think it's awesome. But anyways, I that I'd love, really I'd good. Love to do, I'd love to do a cosplay of it eventually. But oh hell yeah, there's not enough Ben Rileys out there. The way it's that easy they to do too. They but, but, suit in the PS4 game. It like. That is the best version of the Scarlet Spider costume ever. Oh, nailed it. It's perfect. Nailed oh, it. Where's Absolutely my Superior Spider-Man costume? Good luck with that. Good luck with those <laughs> arms, man. Hey, they, no, they have the arms as a suit power. Oh, yeah. I was, convi I was convinced that ah. Superior Spider-Man was going to be one of the DLC suits. I was convinced. I was like, how do you do the robotic arms as a suit power and not include auto suit or even I, I don't like the ninja clan one. Like I was, uh, I was disappointed with a couple, but I was, I, I was let down. I was yeah. let down. The, the game yeah. made it hard to choose. You're like, which one do I want to rock right now? Like I ended up pretty much using Scarlet spider. But, and I actually really liked the comic book one. Uh, I thought that was sweet. Um, and then the other, oh, one, yeah. Yeah, 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 it was like a literally the comic book, and then the the ghost, the spirit spider, uh, was sick, but as well as the, like the the negative suit. But yeah, I could go all day about this, but but yeah, yeah. This no, is fun I, watching you guys nerd out on this, like, <laughs> I because I have no clue could, what you're talking about, and it sounds so awesome. <laughs> no, I, I could talk for hours about like character costumes. I am so nitpicky. Oh, I am the gosh. absolute worst. Like, I'm like, talking DC for a second here. Yeah. I nitpick bat suits to the to hell and back. <laughs> I am so picky and such a pain in the ass, and I am so hard to please. So that means like, you're a big uh, purple glove fan, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> the first appearance is the, is the best. Yeah. So, I'm like. When it comes to the bat suits, sorry for this being a DC tangent. I like I I I'm so easily satisfied, but like easily peeved at the same time. Well, like for example, I was like, oh, Batfleck has the best bat suit because it's finally gray and black. But I was like, ah, but those like weird gold knuckles look funky, <laughs> right? And I I still had something to complain about. Like the Robert Pattinson is perfect. It's perfect. It's that the symbol doesn't say that one more time so this the robert pattinson suit is perfect except for the fact that the symbol doesn't have ears and that's like the one thing that i like obsess wow. the, the it's crazy the the batman move it's on uh it's on hold isn't it robert pattinson had covid uh, so from what i understand Lovely. Robert Pattinson did test positive. He's uh, self-isolating for two weeks. I think they are still able to continue some of the principal photography. So they are able... Collider last week was reporting that they are still shooting right now, but they're shooting around him. Gotcha. Right. I don't know about you, but man. I, I'm excited game. for this. Like, I, I, It looks great. I'm excited for actually they actually do like Riddler, like it just missed on. But like I don't know, it's it looks fantastic. Uh, I know people were hating on it for a while, uh, the whole Robert Pattinson thing. But I think people need to move on from the Twilight uh, Association because in reality he's a good actor. 
Um, and he looks like he's absolutely dominating the role of Batman in, in, the, in the trailers. So it's going to be sweet. Oh, absolutely. I, if, if anybody is brave enough to listen to the two and a half hour long DC fandom recap uh, we had to do, uh, because that 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 weekend did not show us any mercy. Um, I I said there, and I will say again, I was jumping up and down and squealing when I saw the trailer for the Batman. I was sitting there with Travis and Lexi, and like violently shaking them for most of it, freaking out, and just you know, who the hell are you supposed to be? I'm um, vengeance, screeching. I I was just. <laughs> That was gone. It was nothing. No intelligible sentences were able to leave my mouth. We just kept watching the trailer over and over and over and over and over. That's awesome. That's cool. No, it's going to be nice. What's the, what's the release on that? Originally 2021 or no 2022, but I do not think that's going to be happening. Uh, Cause originally before COVID we were supposed to be getting the Batman and whatever the third Spider-Man movie are supposed is going to be within weeks of each other. It was supposed to come out the same month and I could not have been happier because in my mind, I'm like my two favorite superheroes in the same month. I was so happy and they, and I got screwed over the same way back whenever Batman V Superman was coming out. I don't know if either of you guys remember this. It was supposed to come out on the same day as Captain America Civil War. Really? I did not know that. I did they not were know both, that. They were both slated for a March 25th. Date. I remember because my birthday is on March 25th. <laughs> oh, oh my God. You would have been ecstatic. And, I, th- I was like, I'm getting an adaptation of The Dark Knight Returns and Civil War for my 18th birthday. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Instead, I only got... Theaters would have been booming that day. Yeah. Like, just making bank off that. That's Oh, my God. That's incredible. That's crazy. That is nuts. That is nuts. Um... So what still do you think? Salty. Really? <laughs> I'm still I'm still a little bit. I'm still a little bit salty. I didn't get both in one day. Hey man, I don't no, blame it you. happens. I don't it blame happens. it. That would have literally been legendary. <laughs> would have. So uh, should we get into some new some Star Wars news? Yeah man. What do you think? All right, let's do it. Um, I don't even know where to start. Um, you know, I'm seeing a lot. I see a lot of rumors like daily about every new show. And it seems like everything I've seen lately is so negative, unfortunately. But I, I'd like to stick on the positive side, definitely, because of course, uh, the thing I actually saw most recent before the podcast um, was that it's officially that Kenobi's officially in starting in 2021 springtime. So how excited are we about that? I cannot wait. Uh, for this to come out. I am even more excited for all of the behind-the-scenes scoops. Um, oh, yeah. Well, I, I don't believe... You. Sorry, go ahead. Saying, I apologize, Nick. No, I was going to say, I, I, I try to avoid like the movie scoops, but whenever there's a TV show in production, it's so much fun to try to you know do like the Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Pepe Silvio with a string... You know, trying to connect shots yep, to set. Right. <laughs> I think what what interests me about everything going on, just with everything we're getting introduced to, when I look at what happened when The Mandalorian came out, there's just so much positivity. But then after that, you see more stuff come out about The Mandalorian. And, you know, we only got eight episodes. You know, that was plenty for a season. Um, I, I really liked it you get the eight episodes, but then you get stuff that comes out on Disney plus like the gallery where you just learn so much more about it and you get so much more awesome content from the actors, from the directors, everybody. So I think what I'm really excited to, to see is yes, a hundred percent these series, but all the bonus stuff, like you said, Jared, that comes with it, just these behind the scenes stuff. I love that. So I think it'd be really cool if they keep going down that Avenue after, you know, after series come out. And I know a lot, there's been a lot of contention around the fact that they basically confirmed it's going to be a mini series that we're only yeah. getting one season. Mm-hmm. I, 
on paper, I get wanting it to be like a full series run, but like, there's only so much story you can mine from Obi Wan's time. Yeah. And- before you break can, before you just absolutely break the cannon, avoid filler. Like, just give the good stuff, man. Yeah, exactly. There's like you can. You, how many episodes of this series? Like, let's say we stretch it out to a four season show. Episodes just become Obi Wan chasing womp rats off the homestead. Yeah. To avoid it being, oh hey. Obi-Wan had to fight Boba Fett for the 30th time because the Empire is well aware that he's alive now, apparently. There's, like, I, I, I understand wanting more of Ewan, especially with the rumors that like we're gonna Hayden's gonna come back and like we're gonna see like flashbacks to the Clone War. Like the rumors pan out. And that ends up being legit. I understand wanting more of it. But there's only so much you can do of that before it starts to become bloated and, you know, almost nonsensical. Yeah. And one thing that I've been seeing floating around a lot of different places is that it's the episodes aren't going to be like the 40 minute episodes of Mando. We're going to get like full hour, a little over. um, uh, Sorry. uh, The last, the last video stopped. Uh, stopped updating but with these we're gonna get um like hour-long videos so i'm i'm really excited for that and you know when you amplify that off of what you were talking about how there's only so much you can do if we're thinking about mando size episodes you know that's that's 40 minutes Uh, by the end of the by the end of the episode eight eight times four thirty two that's that's not that's just not that long you know but if we do eight eight uh episodes of kenobi in there an hour long that is a lot of content but i i I just i just don't know like you were saying i don't know how they would fit everything into that or no the vice versa how they would like i don't know i feel like i'm kind of rambling right now i just feel feel like it wouldn't work yeah there's a reason why because they said before they shopped this script as a movie yeah. The original plan was for this to be a movie. Yeah, and then that, they uh, realized this isn't going to work. Mm-hmm. It was like but the same weekend cool as. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they're like, there's a lot of good material here. This just won't work as a movie. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I don't, I, I, I look forward to however long we get of this. And again, like some of the most successful you know, ventures in television have been miniseries. You know, you got to think of like Band of Brothers, Watchmen, that are meant to be these eight episode, all killer, no filler runs that just get you to the good stuff immediately that don't waste their time. Because when you have these shows that know they have a few seasons to them, they can drag their feet a little bit. Mm -hmm. So... I think this is a brilliant decision. And again, you need to like people need to recognize if he's going on many adventures during this time, it, nothing is going to make sense. Exactly. Exactly. Because he wouldn't really be that old hermit that we know. I, I, I it, it's, it's almost like, you know, you read, you can't remember what book it was in, or maybe it was a comic, but he wasn't really known. He was just known as being, when he went into town, he was an old hermit. So if I, I, if he has all these adventures, it would be, I don't think that would exactly line up because he, I think he'd be a lot more well-known and he wouldn't be this, this old rat in the desert, you know, I I don't know, but I'm trying to think. That's exactly right. No, I'm completely, you're exactly right. Like, you know, there, I think there's like what one canon story where, uh, Obi Wan like chases off some Tuscan Raiders and you mm-hmm. know pops off against Jabba's thugs. Yeah, two of those instances over the course of twenty years is one thing. Mm-hmm. Him going on five years worth of adventures. Yeah, it'd be a little it, hard to believe. It, there's the. Yeah, it's it's nuts. Um, what what other news is cycling around out there? You guys heard of any any other rumors? 
No, nothing major. Just looking down, looking forward to it. October. What is it? October thirty? Is it coming? October thirty first? Thirtieth. 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 But pump up. Mando. Oh Mando, yeah, baby. that'll be a lot of fun, for sure. Yeah. The the only other news that's floating around is the whole Daisy Ridley talking about yeah Ray being a Kenobi. Yeah, I know. But quite was, frankly, I don't even want to touch that right now. <laughs> no, I know. I was avoiding that because it's like you could go down so many avenues with this. It's just so I wanna, like I don't want to touch it with a ten foot pole because <laughs> I know I, I I have to talk about it on my show tomorrow, and yeah. I don't even want to talk about it at this <laughs> point. <laughs> yeah, Star Wars Twitter. You, you know, Alec doesn't uh, doesn't do as much as the social media stuff as I do. Alec, like just to catch smart up. man. Yo, oh my gosh. I'm just bad at it, man. I'm not good at it. But <laughs> Star no Wars one's good at it. <laughs> is going insane. And it's just, it's getting tiring because you just want to, I just want to see some awesome Star Wars content and conversation. But I feel like right now it's getting lost in the weeds for me. Like when I scroll through the timeline. It, the thing that makes Star Wars Twitter so hard <clears throat> to interact with, in my opinion. Yeah. Cause I'm still I'm still is, pretty new to it, so I'm I'm very curious. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this sort of thing. Obi Wan <laughs> and some That's damn great. fool's adventure. Uh, no, that was, is it like that was, that was pretty good. Great. Hey, thank you, thank you. The force will be with you always. But, uh, <laughs> there's, oh my gosh! I the thing that makes Star Wars Twitter so unbearable is that there are two groups of people, one of which I am definitely a part of, and I will admit right now, I'm part of the problem, is that you have people who make just smooth-brained, vapid, like, bad-faith arguments that people like me, like, on principle, see and hear and go, I have to fight you now. (laughs) You're an idiot. Why are you saying this? Yeah, where it's like you like you just shot that out of your word hole <laughs> on a public people- forum for everybody to see slash hear. Yeah. And like and- now it falls on me to tell you why what you just said makes zero sense. <laughs> yeah, and it's just it's like I see a lot of these and some of these people have to do this on purpose. It's nuts. It's like, like you don't actually think that. There's no way. <laughs> I it, it a lot and a lot of it comes down to like like again it's like that un that unbridled hatred for the new stuff that some people yeah. have or yeah. that like and that's that's where so many of those arguments start because you'll have people who speak in these big broad terms about how oh it was so much better before Disney and it's like everything you're describing was going on long before Disney had their fingers in anything like with yeah. this, with the whole Ray Kenobi thing, and they're like, "Oh, they clearly never had this planned out. This was never planned out. This was never planned out." You're gonna look me in my eyes right now and tell me George Luke planned out Leia being Luke's sister. No, I know. When he had them make out an empire, you're gonna tell me that was all a part of the plan. Yeah, it's, it's like, definitely let's be a honest with each other here. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, I don't see that happening. It's a crazy place to be, man, for sure. Um, I'm trying to think of some other some other stuff that I've been seeing uh, more on the more on the news side, too. I I I am so excited to just eventually get some information about Thrawn and Ezra, all this stuff I keep hearing. Like, man, I hope something like that comes to fruition. The start the the TV series. Is what I was talking about. No, absolutely. I think that we're. I think we're definitely on the cusp of finding out about the eventual Rebels sequel. Yeah. Uh, hopefully. Uh, you know it. It has to be coming eventually. You yeah. know it. It's just a matter. It's like because everything's happening with COVID. I don't think that like we're able to get news because I don't think there had there has been much You're movement right. with that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Everything get everything's getting delayed, and I don't know. It's it's nuts. I didn't even think it could. Like you, you know, you're conscious of it by now, but you're like you you forget that this has slowed down everything. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, any other any other news you guys you guys have seen? No, sir. 
Nothing other than the garbage fire with the Ray Kenobi thing. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my god. Like I like yeah. I said, I'm just I'm just thousand yards staring into the abyss because I know I I know it's gonna be a nightmare for the nights to talk about because I I I sent the YouTube video of a rather prominent Star Wars YouTuber who had yeah. some choice words about the situation. What you know, we all collectively watched the video and went. Oh wow! Like you are purposefully making this conversation so toxic. Like there's no way this is like like you were saying. There's no way this is actually what you think. There is no way in hell this is actually how you feel about this. But yeah, it's nuts. It's nuts. And such as you're never gonna have everybody, everybody agree and. I, I don't know. There's just so much drama that comes comes from it, and it's it's more like people hate each other over it too. Like I see like people like getting seriously like like angry. You know, it's it's you know, like you said, it's one thing to you know argue with someone and have that discussion, yeah. but like I see so many people like they're just downright disgusting. Like when it comes yeah. to Twitter, but yeah, and again, I think a lot of that, you know, not to be preachy, but especially with you know uh the fandom menace and just that it's just the existence of that outfit you know there is that online nerd culture like i get angry about the minuscule things Mm -hmm. that is kind of a pipeline into some darker stuff you know there's a lot of those content creators and youtubers who if you look at their content the stuff that gets recommended to you next ends up being more explicitly uh, hateful stuff. Like the yeah. further down you go with that pipeline. Hmm. And I think there's a lot of people who end up being like, kind of get that sensation of walking on eggshells. Yeah. Because- like you, you get people apologizing for their favorite movies and favorite characters. And it's, it's like, you shouldn't, it, it, you shouldn't feel bad happen. about liking anything well, or not disliking. Not necessarily that. Yeah. Is it there's that like preparation where like for example, if I see somebody on Twitter ranting and raving about the sequel trilogy and they start throwing the term Mary Sue around. Yeah. That becomes a moment where you kind of have to do a calculus of, okay, do you legitimately think that Ray is some kind of overpowered, perfect, you know, model character? Or do you only have this complaint when it's a chick? Yeah. And that becomes that, like, like walking this tightrope. Because you don't want to jump down this guy's throat if he's, not a, if he's not a tool. But by the same token, he's saying a tool say. <laughs> and you yeah. can't tell the difference anymore. <laughs> no. Exactly. If it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, then it's, it's a duck, man. But the one time you go duck hunting, this poor son of a bitch is a goose. (laughs) It didn't have it coming. You know, like he's not subscribed to the quartering, but you went after him like he was, Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, but, you know, hopefully we get some new information soon just so we get a little more positivity. Um, Absolutely. We we definitely need it. But, um, Alec, do you have anything before before we wrap it up here? Nah, man. Nothing. Good with me. Good with you. Good with you. Well, dude, Jared, I just want to, you know, thank you again for coming on. I'm excited to, you know, I, well, I can tell you're excited to do a big old discussion tomorrow about all this. Oh, uh, I, I can't Super wait. <laughs> I, I can't wait. I am counting the seconds to talk about this absolute dumpster fire oh, that yeah. is Star Wars discourse. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you know, we're excited to listen for sure. For sure. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I think that's all I have on my end. Uh, again, mm-hmm. everybody, uh, check check out the new merch site from uh, a Nerd Academy podcast. Check it out. They got a new Patreon like we were talking about at the beginning. Uh, Jared, if you want to send that over to me, I'll get that in the description so people can get it. Absolutely. And, uh, Thank you very much. Of course. Of course. And then, yeah, uh, you know, we'll... Thank- we'll- this, yeah, it's, you know you don't got to thank us thanks thanks for uh thanks for joining us tonight man it's always hey, always it's, fun having you on hey it's a pleasure i had fun the last time i was here you guys were a blast to have on nights yes, so sir. yes sir well again we appreciate it um there was something else i was gonna mention um 
I don't know. We, uh, next week, we don't know if we're doing Star Wars or Marvel yet. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards the Marvel thing right now. But, uh, you know, until then, uh, you know, thank you, everybody, for the support. And may the Force be with you guys. Remember, the Force will be with you. Always. Always.